the 60s, I had a little shop where I sold herbs and candles and oils and incenses and altar supplies and so forth. And it was kind of characterized. It was in an area called, um, it was on Sunset Boulevard. And it was in the Echo Park, Silver Lake Echo Park District of Los Angeles. And everybody around me spoke Spanish. And uh, my wonderful landlord, when I brought the rent, I brought a, a pack, uh, you know, a, a case of uh, Dos Equis. And he really liked me. <laughs> Maybe because of that, but who knows. And so he looked after me quite well. And everybody characterized my shop as a bujeria. Although I was not a brujo uh, or a bruja. I was, which is um, equivalent of a witch or a pagan or a uh, something on that order, or a Wiccan of some kind, in, in uh, uh, South and Central American uh, lore. And I was not doing anything to encourage that. I just happened to be called that. They just thought that that's what that kind of shop was in Bukharia. And so, uh, but I have for years um, been engaged in shape shifting. That I that I have to, that I will admit to. And um, I need some of these forty seven k resistors here. A couple of these guys. Okay. So anyway, I'm making a thing called the the brujo, and I'm making this for my friend Coyote. because I'm certain that the values are right. But if it has a, a silver or a gold band, that tells you the percentage of error that it has, 5% or 10% error. This is a gold band, which is really good. And this is uh, yellow, red, orange. That's right, so I'm looking for that, and I wanted to uh, wrap my 221 capacitor around that which I'm doing and it's kind of about it's got this funny kind of shape to it see like a long armed person with the trailers. and so I'm going to take this here and just linear this thing by trimming off those drops on it and then I'm going to uh, solder this in real nice I like a real good solder connection. I'm going to leave that there. That's hot as hell. And then I'm going to take another one of my 47 kids. I'm going to put my 151 around that. Like this. And same deal. I'm going to take those drops off. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And connect this up. And by the way, something that's overlooked by many scientists when they're examining this sort of thing that I'm dealing with here. I'm going to take my 40, I don't know, I don't know but I need my 270s. Do so I have any 270s? Yes. Ah, this is a wonderful diode. It's a very spunky front-end diode. And I like shock key effects, but on the other hand, this diode is just amazing. Um, and this is my germanium crystal in here. That's what my, that's what got my germanium crystal contained in there. And the germanium crystal is, of course, the key to all of this. Anyway, what many, many scientists ignore, have to ignore, write off, chalk off as superstition, which is not superstition. Magic is nothing more than science of tomorrow. The magic of today is the science of tomorrow. And I am admittedly a fringe scientist. And, but I'm not a fringe magician. And so um, a lot of what I do is magic from the standpoint of 21st century science. It is magic. It would be just as much magic as, let's say, I started building a car in 6th century England. I'd be regarded as a witch for sure. And I would be having a lot of problems getting hold of petrol to run it. Unless I also had a 
distillery, a, a petroleum cracker uh, on the premises. I'd need petroleum and oil and, and uh, lots of other things. There's so many ancillary things when you build a car. There's so many things you need to have uh, in place that it takes a particular level of culture, civilization, in order to even think of building a car, because there's so many things you need to assemble to make that happen. I'm temporizing because I don't want to wait. I don't want to handle this when it's too hot. So here is my template here. This is working good, or working well, actually. Um, so uh, there is a bit of magic involved in this stuff. It's partly crystal technology, but it is also partly magic. And that is something that is overlooked by the average scientist who doesn't know what to be at all associated with magic, because magic is a bunch of superstition, and they're fearful of, the superst of being involved with or associated with superstition. Superstition, in my opinion, is merely an assumption that something happens for a particular reason, and that reason is not a logical or rational reason. Therefore, it is superstitious. Meaning you associate a particular event with a particular group of things that happen. And so, when you do associate those things, you, you kind of draw, you guess, you kind of draw conclusions, you kind of, you do draw conclusions about why certain things are happening. And it is not necessarily true that those are the D reasons from the standpoint of technically or from the standpoint of the scientific community, but they're working assumptions, which is kind of like uh, something that is very accepted in the scientific community, which is Maxwell's demons, which has to do with Brownian motion. And Maxwell's demons aren't really demons. We know they're not really demons, do we? I don't know that. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, they might well be demons that cause uh, the uh, stuff in solutions to move around. I'm going to be testing this now. We'll just see if we get a if we get a Salvadorian station on here. I know I'm working this thing right, and that the magic is working. So we're looking for a Salvadorian station here in Grass Valley. Highly unlikely, but possible. Here's my test gear. Let's just see what happens. We should be getting some Spanish music here. Coincidence control is working, and all it is is this thing here that's causing this. Okay, that's it. Coincidence control, over and out.